In the beginning of 2025, I bought this MacBook Pro M1 Pro. And since then, I don't use this guy like at all. This is Mac Studio M2 Max. But let me explain. So, that Mac Studio was my main machine for coding and video work, uh, but after a while I just felt stuck at my desk. So I decided to buy some used MacBook. And my only real requirement was that it not run as hot as my old Intel MacBook Pro. On a local market website I found a guy selling a 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro uh, with 16GB of RAM uh, for about 600 euro and the battery was still at roughly 90% health. And it definitely sounded good for me, so I met him, grabbed the computer and set it up right away. I installed VS Code and Xcode, thinking I'd use it uh, on trips or from the couch when I'm working on my mobile app. And honestly, man, I liked it so much that I barely went back to my desktop. Right now I'm running two iOS simulators Xcode plus VS Code with uh, my fast API server talking to a local Postgres database uh, on top of Figma, Spotify, Notion and Google Chrome, all at the same time with zero slowdowns. And my old Intel MacBook would have fried under that load like in a minute. Oh, and about Docker, uh, though I don't have it installed right now, uh, when I did run my backend in containers, Docker worked pretty snappy. And only if I spin up five really heavy backend containers at once uh, at my main job, I would notice a real dip. I rarely do that and no laptop with similar hardware uh, would handle it without uh, clothing other apps anyway. And another thing, uh, once I settled into this M1 MacBook Pro, I thought why not try video editing? And it handled Final Cut Pro like a charm. And I still keep all my other apps open plus OBS to record some screencasts and it never hiccups. Honestly, this is one of the best purchases I've ever made. So, let's talk about user experience. The keyboard is super solid and reliable, nothing like those butterfly switches. And anyone who used those knows there is no comparison, top notch here. The display is pretty easy on the eyes, uh, even after long stretches. Uh, and still remember to stand up every hour, look out the window, stretch, and uh, no premium laptop can give you back your health. And thank goodness there is no useless touch bar, just real function keys I actually use, unlike on my 2020 Intel MacBook Pro. Thank you, Apple. And ports are great as well. 3 Thunderbolt, MagSafe, and SD card slot and HDMI. I use every one of them and I'm so glad they brought back the ports every normal laptop should have. And another really important thing for many people is the size of this laptop. These are two MacBook Pro laptops, both with the M1 chip. Uh, this one is 6 an inch laptop, uh, it was given me by a company I work for. And this one is my personal computer. Uh, and as you can see, the difference is huge. Being honest, I think the MacBook Pro with 16-inch display is not convenient for me, uh, because it's simply too big. Yes, it allows you to place more windows uh, on your screen, but uh, for me, it just physically takes too much space and it's heavy as well. So I prefer the laptop with 14-inch display and I think uh, it fits perfectly on your legs and it's just really light uh, and to be honest, it's more pleasant to use it. So, is this MacBook still good for programming in 2025? Absolutely. I use it for both iOS work and backend development. And I think it will keep running smoothly for at least the next 3-4 years. So that was my honest review on a used laptop as a software developer. I wouldn't really spend too much money on a new MacBook Pro when there are really good offers of used and cool computers. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this helpful, please subscribe and hit like button. See you in the next one.